Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Never start with an apology, so let me break that rule. I'm a little croaky this morning. Uh, I heard what the, the minister said, and I have no reason to disbelieve him, but uh, his commitment to health care doesn't appear to extend to Brits at this moment in time. Uh, can has been really unhealthy for me since I arrived last night, but uh, I wonder if I could just ask for a glass of water, because I hope the, vo the voice holds out. Secondly, if I can be a real pain here and just ask for a little bit of room, uh, if I can move that computer to one side. Computers smell fear, you know. They're like dogs, so I don't use them. Right. Thanks very much, Edgar. Well, genuinely, can I say I'm delighted to be here today amongst fellow professionals because, as has already been said, we've much to learn from each other. So let me get straight into the topic, political astuteness, the missing factor. Well, I don't know about my distinguished colleague who's also going to be speaking, but um, yeah, I can testify to the fact that it does on occasions go missing. Napoleon Bonaparte said that the Britain is a nation of shopkeepers, and he was probably right. We're certainly a commercially driven people, driven by enterprise and industry. The innovation that drove Britain's commercial revolution was a communal institution which formalised relationships between individual entrepreneurs. But institutions go beyond commerce. Before we were shopkeepers, we were, and perhaps we still are, institution builders. From Simon de Montfort and Parliament, Nye Bevan and the Health Service in the United Kingdom, Isaac Newton and the Royal Society, and of course not forgetting Robert Peel, who formed the Metropolitan Police Service. The British hallmark has been, historically, the creation and perhaps the maintenance of institutions. And in each of these cases, the state has a role to play, but crucially, the role of the state is to assist in the creation of institutions that are appropriately independent of government. And I'm going to return to that theme later. But perhaps I should start with just a little bit word or two about the Metropolitan Police Service, or the Met, as I'll refer to it after this, and London. The Met was founded uh, rather unceremoniously at 6 o'clock on a Tuesday evening on the 29th of September 1829 when the first police officers walked out of a building called Scotland Yard and led the foundation of policing by consent in the common law tradition. Now, this year, with about 31,000 sworn police officers and around 19,000 other employees, we are the largest single employer in London. That's somewhere in the region of 50,000 plus people policing a city of some 7.5 million citizens with almost as many visitors per day again. With a £3 billion sterling budget, its equivalent, I think your phrase over here, would be the TSX. We'd call it the FTSE Stock Exchange Company.